What if I told you that there are key nutrients you can incorporate into your diet today and it could result in you growing taller. First, there's no magic here. These are not some mysterious foods that increase your height with no explanation. Every nutrient I will discuss in this video has its role and is either directly or indirectly a part of healthy growth in humans. Second, I will not lie to you by guaranteeing you will grow. I've seen many channels make dozens of videos on growing taller as if there is that much to say. They're just wasting your time, giving you false hope and getting the easy views by telling you what you want to hear. Most likely, if you're over 20 years old, you won't grow much. I've seen examples of people growing randomly in their 30s, but that's such a rare and weird occurrence that nobody is able to explain it. But let's be honest, most of you guys watching are over 20 and regret not paying attention to diet and sleep when you were younger. Younger guys that should see this video are probably playing around, sleeping late, going to parties. No matter how old you are, there's not a downside in following the advice here and living with whatever happens. If you grow more, cool. And if you don't, at least you know your diet is not the problem. Your muscles are built from proteins. Your bones are built from proteins. If you want to grow your bones and whole body, you will need to supply this essential type of nutrients to your body in excess, more than it needs right now. But protein is a vague term. There are more than 10,000 different proteins in our body and which ones do you need to eat? Which ones are important for growth? Proteins are built from units called amino acids and there are only 20 different types that participate in all the proteins we have in our body. Different sequence of amino acids build different proteins and furthermore 11 of them are non-essential meaning our bodies are able to produce them through various metabolic processes. However, there are 9 that are considered essential meaning our bodies cannot produce them and they must be gotten through food. So how do you get all of them? Well, by eating a variety of food instead of opting for the same food every single day. I have liked the idea of eating the same food every single day as it gives you more time to do other things. But if it's not balanced, you might start developing a deficiency and therefore stunting your growth due to lack of particular proteins. If you eat a diet that contains at least three of the following, meats, fish, eggs, dairy if you're not intolerant, and nuts, you can be sure you've got all of the amino acids. As for the amount, it's pretty simple, I would aim between 50 and 100 grams daily and you'll get all the protein you need. Calcium and vitamin D are the dynamic duo of bone health. Calcium provides the structural framework for bones combined with collagen, whilst vitamin D helps the body absorb calcium properly. It makes sense that in order to grow, your bones need to grow, and therefore you need calcium that builds these bones. When I say calcium, I guarantee milk popped into your mind. And we all heard the story that we should drink milk to grow taller, but what is there to consume apart from milk? Before I tell you, let's discuss what amount you should eat first. On a daily basis, you're best off consuming between 1000 and 1300 milligrams of calcium, because going too crazy on calcium might impair your kidney function and other digestive issues. So foods you can eat apart from milk are seeds, sardines or salmon that contain bones, almonds and even crazy stuff like eggshells. Yeah, you heard it right. When you think about it, eggshells are not just some waste but they have to be made from something and then something is salt called calcium carbonate which is very bioavailable to our bodies. Crazy part is that only one half of an eggshell is your daily requirement. So you can either take a bunch of eggshells and make your own powder supplement, or do what I do and just eat hard boiled eggs once in a while, scrapping the eggshells, but leaving that one half and eating it all together. Since I've stumbled upon people eating eggshells, I wondered about the side effects. And the two things you should worry about is bacteria and salmonella, which you will eliminate if you boil your eggs for at least 12 to 15 minutes when water starts boiling, as well as squashing the eggshells completely and not prematurely swallowing. If you swallow while the pieces are too big, it can damage various parts of your gastrointestinal system. Your throat, your stomach, your intestines. These shells are sharp. But don't just trust a random guy you saw on YouTube. Do your own research on it. When it comes to vitamin D, it's simpler. Optimally, you'd like to get it from sun. When you expose your skin to UV rays, inevitably, cholecalciferol, which is a form of vitamin D we call D3, gets produced and released into your bloodstream and later gets transformed into its active form. So you should chase the sun as much as possible, as long as it's not burning your skin. Vitamin D is not really present in food, so when it comes to colder parts of the year, you could try to get it through supplements and fortified foods. We know what supplements are. But what are fortified foods? Orange juice is often fortified, and that just means that vitamin D is artificially added from other sources, which doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. The thing that to look out for is avoiding overdose, because these are basically mini supplements, and having too much of these fat-soluble vitamins is bad, as they stick in your body, get stored in fat, and they cannot be flushed, but too much of it can cause toxicity in your body. Same story goes for supplements. I'd say it's safe to go for a 2500 IU vitamin D as it's not too over the daily recommendation and you don't have to take it for months. 
your body will stack up on it. Get a reliable brand, and I put it in quotes because supplements don't have a great control and they need to be proven dangerous or not effective in order to take them off the market. Them existing is not a guarantee of them being good. And last thing, make sure to take them with food as they get absorbed much better when they're in presence of fat. Collagen essential for body and cartilage development is basically 90% of the bone matrix. And there is one little helper that is required in order for collagen to be synthesized. That's vitamin C. I have a whole video on this topic, but in short, without enough vitamin C, there won't be enough collagen. Collagen and vitamin C are especially important when you're growing. You need more building blocks. So what is the daily recommended amount? About 100 milligrams, which turns out to be just about one or two oranges, depending on the size, two to three lemons, and basically all citrus fruits, as well as some cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower. It's not too much, you can implement it easily into your diet and you don't need to worry too much about overdosing on it as it's a water soluble vitamin and any excess that is not needed will be flushed out by your kidneys. We always hear zinc is important, but why is it important? How much is enough? Two main ways zinc impacts your growth is through supporting proper cell division, as well as promoting production of certain growth hormones such as IGF-1. Logically, less growth hormones and cell division, less growth. So what food to eat and how much is enough? Recommendation seems to be from about 10 to 50 milligrams. And of course, don't go over 40 milligrams. It can have dangerous side effects like every other nutrient. To imagine it easier, it's five cups of cereal or oats, it's five ounces of pumpkin seeds, nine ounces of beef, and so on. You will of course be better off consuming a little zinc from a few different sources to also get all the essential amino acids you need. I will leave in the description all the lists for every type of nutrient I've mentioned in this video, so you can check it out and see if you're potentially eating less of them than you need. Now, this is not a nutrient, but still the most important part of growing taller. And I'm here to show you how to grow taller, not to eat some food for no reason. And what would I be if I didn't include this part? The most important hormone for growth is called human growth hormone or HGH and optimizing it can lead to growth if you still have it in your genes. I'm going to give you two ways how you can drastically increase your growth hormone production today and potentially start growing again if you're not done yet. First, injection. Nah, I'm joking. What I'm about to show you increases HGH two times more than an injection would. And you don't need to take anything at all. No food, no supplements, no drugs. There was a study published which found that sprinting can increase growth hormone by massive 771%. At first, it seemed like bull waste, but it appears that it's actually the case. There's no guarantee that it will make you taller outside your genetic potential, but it will promote growth if possible. Here's what you're going to do. Warm up, do a little jog, and then run as fast as possible for 20 to 30 seconds. After that, rest for a minute and a half, then repeat. By the end of the whole practice, you want to have done it for at least six to let's say eight times in total. Another thing that boosts your growth hormone is sleeping. And this is such a plain statement, everybody knows this, but let me explain further. The largest amounts of HGH during the whole day get released while you're in the stage called deep sleep. There's something crucial for you to know here. Your sleep is not consistent. As you're just starting to sleep, most of the time will be spent in deep sleep, while later part of your whole sleep structure will contain a lot more dreaming. This means that most of HGH will get released during the first third of the night. So what? What am I trying to say? Well, your sleep doesn't start when you lay down. Your internal clock knows exactly when you're supposed to be asleep and start the exact same time every day. Now, what we tend to do is go to bed later and later, consistently cutting out deep sleep short. And when you lay down, your body skips a significant part of deep stages. So I'm giving here a problem you're facing, but what is the solution? Ideally, you will go to bed at the same time every single night, plus minus half an hour. So if you usually go to bed at 11 p.m., somewhere between 10.30 and 11.30 is optimal. Now, I know that there are other more interesting interesting things to do and you just don't feel sleep at your usual laying down time. Sleep is a complex process but if you're often wide awake when you're supposed to go to bed, here's what you're going to do. One hour before bedtime I want you to dim 90% of the lights in your room and just sit in the dark. You can use electronics but I want you to put the brightness at the minimum. Night shift on and don't watch something that will cognitively challenge you, like philosophical or how-to videos. Something that will get you thinking. Watch something brain dead, like a movie, a TV show, not so serious podcast. Whatever, you're doing that just so you don't have to to stare at a wall but the point is to give your brain time to feel sleepier and lack of light to photoreceptors in your eyes will also signal to your body to produce the sleeping hormone melatonin and make it easier for you to fall asleep so those are the two ways you increase hgh six to eight time sprints and a regular schedule that doesn't cut out deep stages of your sleep Focus on eating these nutrients. Increase your HGH through activities I've told you, and that's it, you can pray. Don't overstress about it, cause stress can hurt you in its own ways, but I wanted to make this video and give you some actionable steps that you can try. Here's the full recap. 
let me know in the comments if you know more about this and I will pin your comment to help other people. That's the whole point of this. I'm not pretending to be the best on earth when it comes to this stuff, but I'm sharing what I know. And dislike the video if you thought it was generic BS.